President-elect Ferdinand Marcos Jr. picks political scientist Clarita Carlos as his national security advisor, a post typically given to former military officers. Carlos, a retired political science professor from the University of the Philippines, will be the first female to hold the post, at least since the presidency of Marcos's father. Carlos was perceived to be pro-Marcos during the campaign after serving on the panel of SMNI's presidential debate. The National Security Advisor advises the President on issues such as counter-terrorism, counter-insurgency, and maritime security. Meantime, Marcos chooses former lawmaker Conrado Estrella III to lead the Department of Agrarian Reform. Estrella is the grandson of Conrado Estrella Sr., the agrarian minister of Marcos's father. Estrella was a former Abono Party List representative who authored bills addressing problems in agriculture. The World Health Organization says more than 1,000 monkeypox cases have been reported in the current outbreak outside the countries in Africa where it more commonly spreads. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus says the risk of monkeypox becoming established in these non-endemic countries is real but still preventable. 29 countries have reported cases in the current outbreak which began in May. Tedros adds the outbreak shows signs of community transmission in some countries. WHO recommends people with monkeypox isolate at home. Rosamond Lewis, WHO technical lead on monkeypox, says interpersonal close contact is mainly how monkeypox spreads. Smallpox vaccines are being used for the meantime to protect against monkeypox. WHO senior official Sylvie Briand says the agencies assessing the potency of vaccines stockpiled against smallpox and contacting manufacturers and countries who have previously pledged vaccines. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia issues Executive Order No. 16 on Thursday, June 9, making the wearing of face masks optional when outdoors in Cebu. According to the order, face masks will only be required when in closed or air-conditioned spaces. But persons who are unwell or exhibit symptoms of COVID-19 must wear masks at all times when in public. The order says there is a need to rationalize the requirement of wearing masks in adapting to the new normal. Meantime, the Department of Health issues a response to the order saying the current interagency task force protocols only allow the removal of masks for specific instances. The DOH also reiterates the importance of wearing masks and urges the public to continue practicing COVID-19 health protocols such as wearing masks and getting vaccinated and boosted. Thailand legalizes the growing of marijuana and its consumption in food and drinks on Thursday, June 9. Thailand is the first Asian country to do so with the aim of boosting its agriculture and tourism sectors. It also legalized medical marijuana in 2018. The government plans to give away a million plants to encourage farmers to take up its cultivation, but smoking pot is still against the law. Authorities aim to head off explosion of recreational use by limiting the strength of the cannabis products that are illegal. Only products containing a maximum of 0.2% of tetrahydrocannabinol, its psychoactive ingredient, is allowed. Cannabis growers are also required to register on a government app and those who break the law can still face jail and fines. Filipino-American filmmaker Ramona Diaz's A Thousand Cuts wins the prestigious George Foster Peabody Award in the documentary category. The documentary features the plight of Rappler, its CEO and Nobel Peace Laureate Maria Ressa, and the fight for press freedom under Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte. 
According to the Peabody Award juror citation, the film is honored as a quote, cautionary tale for global press freedom, straining against the rise of populist autocracies around the world. It came at a time when I was questioning the value of filmmaking, the role of storytellers at the time of massive disinformation. So thank you, Peabody. With this honor, I feel that the world is still listening that what happens in a corner of this earth in Southeast Asia still matters. That one journalist's plight is every journalist's battle as the world turns again to, authority, to authoritarianism. The documentary premiered at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival. It has since won awards at several other film festivals, including the Gotham Awards 2021, and has been deemed eligible for Best Picture at the 2020 Academy Awards. Recently, it received the 2022 Robert F. Kennedy Journalism Award in the International TV category. A Thousand Cuts can be streamed for free on the YouTube channel and website of PBS Frontline, which acquired the right to the documentary in June 2020.